What is an out-of-body experience? Well, uh, an out-of-body experience is a state of being, a state of awareness, a state of action, uh, separate and apart from the physical body. Now, we've heard about people who have yes, supposedly yeah. died and then have come back to life. That is also an out-of-body experience? That is indeed an out-of-body. It's a rather extreme way. Uh, uh, <laughs> you believe in that, then? Oh, yes. Hello, beautiful people. This is Jonas here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, where today, once again, we are asking big questions about the mysteries of the universe and life itself. Is there more to what we are than the physical human body? What happens when we die? Do we fade into nothingness, or is there some essence to what we are that continues? Mainstream science seems convinced that consciousness is produced by the physical brain, and therefore there is nothing here to what we are that could possibly survive beyond death. And yet there is a huge and growing body of scientific research into the phenomena of near-death experiences and out-of-body experiences. And this research suggests that there is way more to this mystery of consciousness than we currently understand. Some people are quick to dismiss out-of-body experiences as nothing more than hallucinations or fantasy. But today I want to share with you some of the many cases which are so strange and incredible that they defy all explanation and challenge our scientific understanding and seem to argue quite convincingly that there is a deeper truth to what we are beyond this body, beyond this lifetime, and that this lifetime is just another chapter in a multi-dimensional, never-ending adventure. Doctor, if I can start with you, you collected more than a thousand stories of near-death experiences from mm -hmm. people all around the world, and you say the consistencies in, the, in those stories help prove scientifically that there is an afterlife. So based on your data, mm -hmm. what is the proof? Well, my research reveals nine lines of evidence about the reality of near-death experiences and their consistent message of an afterlife. One good line of evidence is that those that are blind, including blind from birth, can have visual near-death experiences, not as fragments, but as fully visual impressions during their near-death experiences. What the doctor just referenced are the strange and fascinating cases of blind people who have a near-death experience and from a vantage point outside of their body, they report suddenly being able to see. The crazy part is that in many cases, the details that these people describe seeing are later validated and confirmed to be accurate. A number of these cases are discussed in this study called Near Death and Out-of-Body Experiences in the Blind, a study of apparent eyeless vision. And in his book, Life After Life, Dr. Raymond Moody writes, an elderly woman had been blind since childhood, but during her near-death experience, the woman had regained her sight, and she was able to accurately describe the instruments and techniques used during the resuscitation of her body. After the woman was revived, she reported the details to her doctor. She was able to tell her doctor who came in and out, what they said, what they wore, what they did, all of which was true confirmed. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, this is simply incredible because there is no medical explanation for this. A blind person can suddenly see? How is it possible that these people who have been blind all their life, they've never known vision or light or color, suddenly gain the ability to see and can describe details that are later validated and confirmed to be accurate? So these visions are occurring during a time when there's no brain activity to enable perception in the first place. Even hallucinations would require some brain function, so there really is no explanation for this from materialist science. The most provocative evidence for heaven from near-death experiences seems to me to be cases where people come back from near-death experiences and they have information there's no way they could have had if they had just had a physical experience while on an operating table. For example, some people come back and they're able to recount conversations that their relatives have had five blocks away from the hospital. In other occasions, people have actually had experiences of objects on the hospital roof or somewhere else where when people go to investigate whether those experiences were real, they see the objects just as the people saw them. It should be impossible and yet it's real. <laughs> it's almost as if the person really is there to perceive what is happening even though their brain is shut down. And in that case, the out-of-body experience seems to become very real indeed. And there are thousands upon thousands of these unexplainable cases. 
because near-death experiences are quite common. Studies from around the world indicate that somewhere between 4 to 15 percent of people will have this experience at some point in their lives, and even at the low end of that range, we're talking about millions of people from all over the world. For me, this is really compelling evidence that consciousness isn't produced by the brain, that there's more to this mystery of consciousness. We don't have the answers because to our scientific model, when people have died, there should be no more conscious awareness going on. Uh, but it sounds like maybe consciousness is able to continue. And by that, I don't mean that they're awake, but that entity that makes us who we are, makes Sam who he is, makes Rena who she is, the self, the mind seems to continue and doesn't become annihilated after a person has gone through their process of death. With our current uh, medical knowledge, we, 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 we believe that consciousness is a product of brain function. So it should be impossible that patients should have enhanced consciousness with the possibility of perceptions and memories, etc. It's impossible, but it still happens. So we have to change our ideas about the relationship between consciousness and the brain. Now, beyond near-death experiences, there are many other types of out-of-body experiences to consider. For example, shamans all throughout human history have described a practice of intentionally leaving the physical body and traveling to other realms or dimensions to help heal people. Astral projection or astral travel is another type of out-of-body experience which usually occurs in states of deep meditation or in the transition from waking to sleeping. And some people say that this is a skill that can be learned and practiced intentionally. The man shown in the beginning of this video is named Robert Monroe, and he was a pioneer in the exploration of out-of-body experiences. Monroe was a successful businessman and a pilot whose life was changed forever when one night as he was falling asleep, he suddenly found himself floating upwards out of his body. And to his great astonishment, he looked down to the shocking sight of his own body in bed next to his wife. Monroe went on to have many thousands of these experiences, which he documents in his book, Journeys Out of the Body. And it's a fascinating book where Monroe also describes the technique he developed for inducing and controlling these out-of-body experiences. He said that anyone can do it and it can be developed as a skill. There's a major discovery that comes with the result of such activity or practice. Without any equivocation, you know that you do survive death. This changes your overview, your perspective. You have that knowledge and it's not a religious thing. It's not a, a philosophic thing. It's a very, very pragmatic thing that you do survive physical death. Almost every ancient civilization around the world, every spiritual and shamanic tradition, every major religion understood this truth, that this body is a temporary vehicle for the deeper essence of what we are. Basically all cultures, even there is a sociological paper uh, that described that 83% of the cultures that people had, uh, that this, this individual had studied, they already had names for the astral body. So it shows how, uh, you know, different cultures knew about it, had techniques in some cases on how to induce the out-of-body experience. You know, out-of-body experiences have been documented and written about for thousands of years in all of the holy texts throughout history. From the ancient Egyptians, to the Mayans, to the Sumerians, the Tibetan Buddhists, the Hindus, ancient Vedic texts, they all describe out-of-body experiences. They all describe that there is more to what we are than this lifetime, and more to the infinite, multi-dimensional existence than this physical universe. All across the world, people describe very similar characteristics to their out-of-body experiences. And really a basic question that we have to ask ourselves is, why is it that millions of people from all over the world, from all different cultural backgrounds, report remarkably similar out-of-body experiences if they're just hallucinations? If these are all just hallucinations, then it would be very strange to have so much consensus about what these experiences are like. And the best explanation for that is that at least some of these experiences offer a true glimpse into a bigger picture of reality that we don't yet understand. 
and our sciences are finally starting to catch up to this truth, to this ancient knowledge. In a recent video I made called What is Consciousness, which I'll link below, I described how all of our latest advancements in quantum physics are actually proving that consciousness is non-local, which means that it exists beyond the brain and beyond the physical universe altogether. I think that in the next decades, um, quantum physics with uh, a knowledge of structure within the brain is going to take us on the verge of, of a reconciliation of spirituality and science that's never been experienced before and it's going to be really amazing. In the future we'll find that actually mind may well be a separate scientific entity that can continue functioning when we reach the end of life and when the brain has stopped working. That will have huge implications for all of mankind, there's no doubt about it. It will revolutionize our whole way of scientific thinking and it will open up a whole new field of science which has as of yet been undiscovered. Humanity is collectively waking up to a bigger picture of what it means to be alive and aware in this mystery of existence. Because the study of consciousness is revealing more clearly than ever before that there is more to what we are than the physical body. And this will change the world forever. As Nikola Tesla once said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. We're on the verge of a new era for our species and for Mother Earth, where we recognize our fundamental oneness and where we come together as one human family with more unity and more love. This is the great awakening of humanity. It begins within each one of us, and I am so, so grateful and honored to share this adventure with you.